In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to push a character inside of Unreal Engine 5. We are going to be specifically looking to push this character in the direction that our third person camera is looking. This is a C++ tutorial, so we will be doing some code, but first let's talk about the theory behind what we're doing. Everything we do is going to revolve around a character. Our character here is going to need some way to interact with the world, and we're going to do this by pressing a button. When this button is pressed, we are going to need to see what sort of objects are in front of us in the area we would like to be pushing from. So we're going to need to have some sort of volume that we have on our character that's going to be responsible for our pushing range, so to speak. That's the theory. Let's start working on this now. Go into your third person tutorial character C++ file. Once that's open, let's go into our header file and let's start building out our contract. First, we're going to input that action that we were talking about before, and we're going to use this pre-existing code block that talks about how we can create an action. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to create a new version of this where I can edit this to meet our new needs. So instead of this being a look action, this is going to be our push action. All of this can stay the same, but we're going to change this to be the variable name push action. And it's very important to note here that this push action is going to be used in code to bind a button press to a specific method that we're going to create. Let's create that method now. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom of this file and we're gonna create a private section. And let's create a private void method that we're gonna call on push. And that is going to be our happy method that we're going to call that is going to do the actual pushing. So that takes care of the first part of our theory. Now let's go and create that volume that's going to track what we can push in front of us. So this is a U property that's going to have our defaults editable. And we're going to put this in a category that we're going to call pushing. And this is where we're gonna keep all of our pushing variables for simplicity. To make things simple, we are going to be using a U box component, which I have forward declared so that I don't have to clutter up my header file. And I've called this pushing volume so that it's easy to keep track of. Now, the only other thing that we're going to need here is some sort of force so that we can apply a force easily with a variable. I'm going to do this with another U property. And our actual variable this time is going to be a float that I'm going to call pushing strength and I'm going to set this to be equal to 1,000 to start. So that's the outline of our contract. Let's fill in the meat now. I'm going to create this definition inside of my C++ file, and now we're good to fill in everything else. First thing we're gonna do, inside of our header file, we did forward declare this UBox component. So we're gonna scroll all the way to the top of our C++ file, and we're gonna make sure that we include this components slash box component dot H. This is the box component, and we need to make sure we include it so we can use our box collider. So now we're gonna go into this constructor here, and at the bottom, we're going to create a place where we are going to initialize that box component. To do this, we're gonna follow the same format that all the other objects are taking here, where we're going to create a default sub-object of the type that we're interested in, and we're going to give it a text that it's going to be its name inside of the Blueprint Editor. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up some sort of attachment so that this volume is going to follow around our character. To do that, we're gonna call our pushing volume, and we're gonna call a method off of that called setup attachment. And then in this case, we just want it to follow around our root. So we're gonna set this to follow around our root component. So this is going to attach our pushing volume to whatever our root component is. If you miss this step, you might have a situation where you are not able to actually push things. And that's because your actual volume that is going to handle the pushing is going to just stay inside of limbo and not be able to follow around your character. So make sure you set up this attachment. Next, we're going to edit our setup player input component function. So once again, I'm going to copy the previous action and then I'm going to paste it and then we're going to edit it to fit our needs. So this is now going to be our pushing action. And first we need to give the action that we want to have fired and that is going to be our push action. And then we're going to give it an event. Triggered is the event that happens when the event is active. And then there's a whole bunch of other ones such as started, which only fires once, once the actual push has started. The difference between started and triggered is started is guaranteed to happen first, and there are other more complicated variables that we could set up that could cause triggered to happen after a button is held or after other things have happened. Since we only want this to happen once and we want it to happen right when the button is pressed, I'm going to switch this to started because that fits our needs a little bit better here. And then finally, this last part here is the function that is going to be called when our action is taken. And in this case, we've already created that action that is our on push method. So this line of code is now successfully taken our push action, which we have yet to set up inside of Blueprint. But when that does happen, we are going to call our on push method, which is right up here. So to show you what this looks like, I'm just going to go into on push and I'm going to give this a simple log that is going to just be a temporary log that says the word pushing when we take this action. So let's save and compile now. 
And with a successful compile, we're good to go into our third person folder here to set up all of our blueprint components that we have just set up. First, we're gonna handle input. I'm gonna go into the actions folder and I'm going to create a new input action. I'm going to call this IA underscore push. And I'm gonna open this up. There is nothing specific I want to add here. I just wanna talk about this triggers array here. These triggers specifically allow you to customize when that triggered response in code is going to fire. So for instance, if I hold and release, I can set up parameters here that say after a certain amount of time where we have held down the button, then we want to have that triggered threshold fire. Now in this case, we're not doing anything so complicated, but I wanted to show you why using started is going to be more relevant in more situations. So now with the actual action completed, we're gonna go back to the input folder and we're going to edit this IMC default. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to create a mapping so that we have the ability to use our push action. So let's create this little plus sign and that's going to allow us to add in this push. And then from here, we get to set up all of the triggers we want. You can use a gamepad, your keyboard, whatever you want. But I'm just going to press this button so that I can just key in the key that I want. And I'm going to be using the F key for this example. So we can save that and then we're good to go back into our blueprint folder and edit our actual third person character blueprint. Make sure you open the full blueprint editor and now we're good to go and get things set up. I'm going to go to the viewport so I can see what's actually happening here and we can see that that pushing volume that we created earlier is showing up like we would expect. So first let's set up our pushing volume. Inside the editor if I go up to the top here I can use the R shortcut or click on it in order to set up the size of this volume that we want to detect what we are going to be pushing. And then once that's done I'm going to hit W so that I can move this volume just in front of our character so that we don't accidentally push our existing character when we go and do this. So now with our pushing volume set up, the next thing we're going to do is go to the root component here, this BP underscore third person character, and we're going to search for that category of variables that we created earlier called pushing. And we can see here that we have a push action, which we should fill in to be our IA underscore push because that is the action we want to be linked in code. And we can see here that this is our pushing strength, which we will be able to edit in Blueprint, which will save us from compiling compiling a lot when we're testing this later. Now that's everything filled in and that's all nice and dandy. So let's compile and save our blueprint and let's just take a look and make sure this is working. I'm gonna open up this output log so we can see everything that happens and I'm gonna hit play. And now when I hit the F key, we can see that the word pushing goes to the log so we know that everything is set up and working properly. But overall, this is not very useful. We're just outputting a word when we press a button. We wanna actually impart a force onto another object. So let's set that up now. So let's talk a little bit more theory here. Let's drag in a copy of our character. So when I select our character here, we can see in a slight outline, both the volume of our capsule component and of the cube that is going to detect our push. Using this cube, we're going to use a method called get overlapping actors. When get overlapping actors is called, it's going to search inside of itself and see what is inside. Then it's going to give that to us in an array that we can then use to apply the forces to who needs to be pushed. So back into our on push method in code, let's delete this log. So we're going to get our pushing volume and we're going to call a method off of that that I handed out before called get overlapping actors. We can see that this get overlapping actors is going to return us a T set of overlapping actors. The reason I know this is going to be returned to us is this has an ampersand symbol. This ampersand symbol means that this is going to be an out parameter, which means whatever variable we pass in here is going to be filled in with the values of overlapping actors. And then finally, we have an optional parameter here where we can filter for a specific class. The reason I know this is optional is because we can see that it is equal to null pointer or equal to some value inside of this declaration. So that being said, in order to use this, we are going to need to set up some sort of variable that is going to be able to catch these overlapping actors. And we can see here that this is going to be of type T set, a T set that is going to be of type A actor pointer. Now, a T set is just a T array that has no duplicate values. So we are going to be using a T array in order to pass in to catch this T set. So to create a T array, we're going to use keyword T array, and this is going to be a type A actors pointer because that is the type that we are trying to get. And I'm going to call this my actors. And then inside of get overlapping actors, I'm just going to pass in my actors. So once this method is finished, my actors is going to have all of the actors that are inside of the pushing volume. From there, we just need to iterate through that array and then apply forces to whoever is a 
character. So now that we have an expectation of what's happening when we call get overlapping actors, we're going to create a for loop that is going to check if something that we catch is going to be pushable, and we're going to push it if so. This is the skeleton that we're going to be working with here. So remember, my actors is giving us an array that we are going to check. And what this declaration is saying here is for every entry that is in this my actors array, we want to check something. What are we checking? Well, specifically inside of this if statement, what we're doing is we're creating a character variable and we're setting that to be equal to the result of the cast of the specific entry that we're checking. So if the actor that we're checking is a character, we're going to give it to the pushable variable and then we're going to do something in here. The reason we care so much if it's a character is because all characters have a very handy function called launch character. This launches the specific character that we need and all we have to give is a velocity and what's being overridden. So the velocity we already have, but it needs to be in terms of an F vector. So let's create an F vector and we're just going to give it our push strength three times. And then besides that, I'm just going to set these other variables to false so we can talk about them later. So now we've set up a system that is going to be able to detect if we have a character and then launch it if we do. Let's save and compile. So when we hit play here, we already have another character that we're going to be able to bully. And I'm going to get behind him and then I'm going to hit F. And we can see that it gets launched and pushed away. But the direction that they're getting launched and pushed away doesn't make any sense, right? If I go this way, and I look at them and I push, they're still flying in the same direction because that is the direction that our vector is saying they should fly in. We're just basically sending them in that exact direction. So let's change things so that we are sending them in the direction that we're looking. The way we're gonna do that is we're going to need to access the camera, which is a representation of the direction our character is looking. To do that, we're gonna need to get our controller. So that is an easy thing for us to do. We're gonna call the variable get controller. Getting the controller is rather easy. We're gonna call the method get controller. And that is going to get the player controller that is controlling our character. And then off of that, we can call a very handy method called get player viewpoint. If we open this up, we can see that this is going to give us back a location and a rotation. Again, we know these are out parameters or parameters that we're going to need to catch with variables because of this ampersand that exists in front of each one. So I'm going to create an F vector that I'm going to call the location and I'm going to create an F rotator that I am going to call the rotation. And then to make sure that this method works, we're going to pass in the location and rotation variables that we just created. And now when this method runs, we are going to have the location and rotation of our player's viewpoint. Now we can take that one step further and we can get the actual direction in terms of a vector so that we can input that into our pushing that is being done. The way we can do that is we're going to create another f vector variable and this is going to be called our push direction and I'm going to set this to be equal to the rotation because the rotation is going to be the specific direction we're looking because it's the rotation in the world and I'm going to call the vector method off of that which is going to convert this rotator that is rotation to a vector that we can use as our push direction, which is going to let us send it in a specific direction down here. So now what I'm going to do is we're gonna edit this actual launch character and we're gonna get rid of our push strength and we're going to add in our push direction and we're going to multiply that by our pushing strength. The reason for this is push direction is just a direction. The numbers themselves are very small. They're like a decimal point of small. So we need to take the actual direction and we need to give it a force so that we can expand that vector to basically shove a farther. Let's save and compile. I'm going to stand behind my friend and I'm going to push. And we can already see that that's throwing in the right direction. We can really make this dramatic by looking this way and then it pushes them that way. If I stand here, I can push them that way. If I stand here, I know they're in my cube and I can look this way. Let's get really dramatic about it. And we know that this is shoving them in the direction that we're facing, which is the behavior that we were looking for. But what is a little annoying is they're kind of just skidding on the ground. An alternative thing that you could do if you wanted more control of the Z axis is to split up that vector. So here we can see we've created an F vector that is going to use the push direction of both the X and the Y, but it's not going to use the Z so that we can specifically say, we wanna throw this dude vertically. And I'll quickly show you what this looks like in practice. Okay, with that compiled, now we're going to go and look, and then we can see that we are launching them one pushing strength high 
when we shove. If you found this tutorial helpful, subscribe to the channel because I am teaching myself Unreal Engine and I will teach you everything that I'm learning. Happy gaming and I'll see you next time.